Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm excited to be participating in the Aussie YouTube Hop for the month of December and our theme this time is Christmas. So I've made a modern Christmas art journal page to share with you. We're a group of ladies who come together and share their art and craft in the hope of inspiring you to pull out your supplies and play along with us. So I can't wait to see how the other girls have interpreted this month's theme. Don't forget to hop along and see their creations. I'll leave a link in the description box below of the person next to me on the list. Check out her comment, like and comment, then go to her description box, find the person after that and hop along till you come back to my video. If you get lost along the way, I'll leave a link to everyone's YouTube channels so you can check out all the creations. And if you feel inspired to play along, please tag us and on the Facebook and Instagram links and I'll leave the links in the box below. So on to the project I'm making. I'm starting off my large Gina Wakely journal and I've just squeezed out some paint, magenta and fuchsia onto my page and I'm using a credit card to scrape it across the page. Now the colours I'm using in this journal or in this Christmas layout are not very Christmassy but they're colours that I really love to use um, on Christmas cards when I'm looking for something that's not red and green. Obviously I'm using pink and green, but sort of those lime greeny colours and the, the magenta pink sort of really pops for me. So just scraping my paint all over the page and you noticed I dried it in between. Now that's really, really important when you're doing this technique because you want to get layers of colour rather than mixing the colours together. If I hadn't dried that first layer and mixing the green in with it, it would have turned into a yucky brown colour. So it is really, really important that you leave your paint to dry in between and you get these beautiful splotches of colour all over. And while it looks like a mess at the moment, I do promise you it does all come together at the end. For those people who aren't sort of art journals who might be watching this, this is a great technique to do in the back of your scrapbooking pages or even on a piece of cardboard and cut up for um, card backgrounds. I used to use, do that a lot when I was card making, so I'd sort of do this on a piece of paper and chop it up and make them into funky backgrounds. So to add a bit more white onto the page, or lightness onto the page, I'm just scraping across some white as well and I've just got a pencil that I'm just scribbling into it to get some texture onto the page. Um, now you could have done that on any layer of the wet paint, so scribble into wet paint and then dry it. I just chose to do it on the final layer so I've got that bit of texture happening. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to the scribbles, I just scribbled into it. Now I had some bubble wrap sitting around and I thought I'd use that to again add something different onto my page. So I'm using the bubble wrap to do some mark making stamping on the background and you can see because it's not perfect that you get these beautiful little impressions and it's free and if it's around Christmas time you've probably got lots of bubble wrap hanging around the place so have a look at all the stuff that you've got sitting around and see if there's anything that you could use for mic making on your page just add some ink to it and try stamping with it see what works. I'm also going in with my stencil and re-adding some of the colour back in so I'm using some of that lime green again it got a little bit lost in the background so I want to add some brightness to the top of the page. Because it's me I had to get my neons out as well so I'm just going in with the neon pink and the neon green just to really boost the colour of this page. I wanted to be really really bright um, for what I was doing. Now I had an idea of what I was doing but when I sort of got to here, I thought, mm, is that what I really wanted to do? So I, I persisted with it anyway, and I'm so glad I did because I really loved how it ended up in the end. So I'm using these strips of um, scrapbooking paper. It's just a really um, light scrapbooking paper, but it's got a little dot pattern in it, which while you can't see it sort of from far away, when you get close up, you can kind of see it. And I'm using these as <clears throat> three really simple figures on my page. Um, because my idea was to illustrate a Christmas carol so I wanted to illustrate um, We Three Kings um, talking about the bright star. So as I was doing this I was thinking what colours am I going to put into this and for the kings I actually want to use probably a little bit more traditional colours so I went for the red green and turquoise blue because that's a traditional Christmas colour I'm sure um, and I'm just doing some really simple stripes across this paper. Now you saw me put out some paint before um, which was a Dina Wakely paint and that's the paint I used in the background but I actually 
changed my mind when I was doing these strips because I knew I wanted to shade over them with colour pencil. So I actually used the Paper Artsy um, Chalk Fresco paints. And the reason for that is they're a really matte finish, so it takes colour pencil really well. The Dina Wakely paint is fantastic, but it's not brilliant for colouring over the top of it. It's, it's a sort of a, it's not semi-gloss, but it's got more gloss than this um, paint. So this paint's got a really great tooth to um, colour over. If you've only got... Um, sort of acrylic paint that's a little bit shiny, you can always put a coat of clear gesso over the top and that will give it the tooth back again. But as I had this paint anyway, I thought I might as well use what I've got. So I'm going back in with some white as well to paint in the white stripes, which kind of seems redundant because I had a pattern paper that I was using. But the paper artsy paints are <clears throat> somewhat translucent. So even though it looks like a solid color coverage here, when you do look up close to it, you do see the pattern still coming through, which I really liked. I'm just drying off these strips, so it's very um, Dr. Seuss-ish Dr. Seuss um, in its look at the moment. So I did decide I wanted them at different levels, so I did trim the two side ones off. The reason I chose um, the Three Kings um, to do this page is I've got some decorations in my house um, from Jim Shore um, wooden decorations um, and my mum's got some and my sister's got some as well and um, they always come out at Christmas time they're the three kings and they tell the nativity story in the middle of um, the body um, but we've got them three sizes so mum's got the the huge ones I've got the middle sized ones and my sister's got the baby sized ones and I really like that we've all sort of got the same decorations but they're all different sizes so that's what I was thinking of when I was sort of putting this page together so I decided for the face that I was going to use the book page as well. And again, I'm going in with the um, Paper Artsy Paints uh, Vintage Rose, I think it is, which is a sort of a flesh colour, and painting over. And again, you can sort of see it's a, a fairly opaque paint, but you can still see that book text peeking through, which is what I wanted. I wanted to have a little bit of texture in the background. So now I'm just going in with some Prismacolor pencils and doing some simple shading. So I'm just using a darker green on the edges and a little bit of a lighter green um, as I come in towards the middle, just to sort of blend it all together. And this is just to sort of make the bodies look a little bit more three-dimensional, um, a little bit more rounded as I'm going. So I'll do the same on all three figures, um, putting the shading in as I go along. If I wanted to make it particularly three dimensional, I probably should have curved the lines I painted to begin with, but I wasn't really thinking that far ahead as I did it. So you can see me going in with, to the middle with the lighter color just to blend it all in together. Then I'm doing exactly the same with the red and I'll do exactly the same with the green. So when I'm doing this, I will go back at the end and use a black pencil just to add a little bit more definition to the shapes um, <clears throat> but this is just all about sort of darkening up those edges so it's a little bit tedious sorry about this watching someone color in with pencil but this is the process so it's all fun and games it's actually a technique of because I'm a primary school teacher I've been teaching my students how to um, shade with color pencil at the moment we've been doing some um, geology art so looking at sort of strata and colouring in and doing some shading. And for some kids, they've loved the um, precision of it and trying to do it. And for other kids, it's just been really tricky for them to go back and do. So it was uh, funny that I decided to do this in my own time as well as teaching it at school. So on the white, I'm just going in with a really warm uh, grey colour. Again, just to shade in the edges. You can't really see it on the green, but you can see a little bit more on the red. And that just helps to um, bring that sort of shape illusion together by having it on the white. And it's not something I often think about when I'm using white to add shading on top of it, but it really does help to make the piece look finished. So if you're playing around with white and you're doing something through my trying to make something look three-dimensional, think about shading your white as well. Um, you'll find it makes a huge difference to the end product. 
Now I'm just going into the faces and just doing some shading around the outside. I tend to when I'm shading faces, I don't know why, but I always go for purple, so sort of a violet and a, a, a light purple and then some of the peachy colour over the top. And now I'm just going in with my stipula or pencil to add in some of that definition. And at the very corners of the pieces, I'm actually rounding them off a little bit, again to sort of give that illusion of a rounded figure. So, um, it, while I've never usually been a, a colour pencil person in the past, I have found it can be very useful for um, adding those sort of illusions to your paintings that I find difficult to control with paint because I always use the wrong paintbrushes or the wrong thicknesses. So having something that I can control a little bit more like colour pencil is, has been really, really helpful um, for these situations. I could have used a paint marker to do this, but I like using the Stabilo or pencil because if I do make a mistake or if I want to bleed it out a little bit, I can use it because it's a water-soluble pencil. So it just gives me a little bit more flexibility. So once I've finished doing this, I decided obviously my kings needed crowns, so I'm just measuring out um, the heads and then just cutting out some rough crown shapes just out of some cardboard and sticking it into my book. So I'm obviously going to paint these up in a metallic colour, I think. I think I ended up using my gold. I did. <laughs> I was having to think for a minute. Um, so this is the golden. It's actually not a gold. It's a bronze colour, but it's the best gold I've got in my, my um, acrylic paints. So it's a beautiful um, bright, shimmery, it looks like liquid metal on the page as you can see there with the shine. So I'm just gluing those on top of my little men and then I'm going to find some numbers in a book that I wanted to number them one, two, three because while I'm explaining to you where the inspirations come along Probably if you just looked at those figures themselves, you would have thought, oh, okay, so I wanted to put the one, two, three to sort of indicate the three the three kings. So um, I started off using um, normal numbers and then I couldn't find, ah, oh, I cut out the one and obviously the two was on the other side and I couldn't find another two. So um, <clears throat> luckily in the, it's a poetry, it's a French poetry book and they had the um, Roman numerals so I managed to cut those out and pop them on. So just having that little bit of vintage text on the um, figures I really liked. And I was playing around for a while as I was doing this wondering do I put in a face or not. Um, I really wasn't sure if I was going to. Um, <clears throat> Put in just not not a detailed face but just sort of eyes or a nose or mouth or something um, so that sort of as I was sort of debating that I decided in the background I was going to put down the stars so I just use a paint pen and just with a really scribbly um, pen stroke and um, put down the, the stars in the background while I was doing that I knew I wanted to have the big star because that's what sort of was thinking about when I was doing it. I was trying to work out if I wanted to have it as a stencil or a mask and in the end I chose to use a mask. So you can see me cutting out my star and sticking it on my page and again I was sort of looking at it going do I want to stencil something in white or do I want to have that background going through. So I was just going through to find my stencils of stars but I can't find my it's one of my favorite stencils and it's gone missing so I decided I was going to stick with the one that I had and I decided that I was going to use it as a mask and use um, Payne's Grey so I didn't want to go black I wanted to have it slightly softer and you can see as I'm doing this I'm actually putting on really really lightly so while it's darkening up the page and I'm getting that impression of the star it's not dark enough that it's blocking out the entirety of the background because I really wanted to see that beautiful colour shimmer through. So I'm just tapping it on really lightly. I don't have very much paint on my sponge at all. And I'm just spreading it out just to darken up some areas to make it kind of look like night time um, but not blanking it all out. I wanted to add some more stars in, so I'm using some liquid acrylic paint, some liquid ink, sorry. So I'm using a white 
liquid ink and I will also use a gold. I find when I'm doing spatters I really like using a um, fan brush. I find I get really sort of those bigger spatters and little spatters. It just looks a lot easier to me. I didn't cover up my figures to do this because most of the spattering was happening on the right hand page so it didn't really matter and it just added a little bit of texture to the figures anyway um, and I was actually really lucky because apart from one of the crowns I think um, everything sort of stayed mostly splatter free. So I'm just drying off the ink. Um, it is a good idea to do this. Uh, the ink dries fairly quickly but if you've got big splatters um, it does take a little while. It can be quite sticky so it's, it's worthwhile drying it off before you go. Finally I went back in with my paint pen and just added in some more stars. So you could still see the stars in the background but obviously they've been dulled off a little bit by the black paint or the paint spray paint sorry. Um, so it sort of gave you that illusion of um, stars in the distance and, and stars in the foreground. Finally I'm writing in my quote from the song We Three Kings. So star of wonder, star of bright, star of royal beauty, bright. Uh, Westford leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Unfortunately, I did. I knew the first bit. I had to look up the rest because I wasn't a hundred percent sure of um, how how it all went. So I'm just using really scratchy writing, extended letters, extended strokes, which I really like the look of. And I wrote in black. I was thinking about going back and highlighting some of it, but I kind of like how it. It's there but it sort of disappears into the background as well. So this is my final page and it's my final YouTube hop for the year. So thank you so much for being involved and checking out all the um, girls on the YouTube hop and for supporting us this year. This is the sixth hop for this year. Um, please make sure you check in the description box below to see who we're going to hop to next and their fabulous Christmas creations and all the links to the YouTube channel will be there.